Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video, I want to go over the network discovery component and how you can use it to find local games on your LAN and connect to them. So if you've used the network manager's uh, matchmaking system before, you know that you could send off a request and then get back a list of available matches and then have your player join a match using that. For a LAN game, it's a little bit different. We need to use a component like the network discovery and then the way it works is it'll just keep broadcasting out at whatever the broadcast interval is. Right here it's set to a default of one per second. And then other systems on the network just need to listen for that broadcast and then act upon it. So right now what I'm gonna do is start broadcasting on another system. I'm just hosting a LAN game. And you can see we got a new game up here, here as an option. And you may have noticed here, since I have the uh, show GUI option on, it's actually showing us the game here too. And I could connect either way. Now I'm gonna stop and we should see the game disappear after a couple seconds. Any second now, and then I'm gonna jump into the code. So there it goes, disappeared. And you'll see why it took a little while for it to disappear. So let's open up the script. And the first thing you'll notice is that we have a timeout of five. And all I'm doing here is waiting and every five seconds or sorry, five seconds after a entry comes, we just kill it and time it out. And I'll show you how that works in just a moment. Um, the next thing is a dictionary of addresses. So this is all of the connection info broadcasts that are getting sent across. And then the second value is the time when they should expire at. So that's how we're cleaning it up. And again, I'll show that in just one moment. First, let me look at the LAN connection info and show you what's in here. All we have is a struct with an IP address, a port, and a name for the game. And then in the constructor, what we're doing is taking the raw data that's getting sent over and then just parsing out the IP address and the port. It's actually sent as a bit of a, a long string. So we have the from address with a string and it has the IPv6 and the IPv4 address. And we're just pulling out the IPv4 address. And then for the name right now, I'm just, uh, naming it local but eventually I'll add support so that you can broadcast out the name of your game too and then that would show up in here. And that's why our game showed as local in the UI a moment ago. So let me run through how this thing works. Now in awake we call initialize on the network discovery component that's the base.initialize and then we just call start as client so that way as soon as this thing starts up we're listening and we're paying attention watching for broadcasts. And then I kick off a coroutine called clean up expired entries. Um, I'll go over that in just a moment, but as you can imagine, it's really just going through these LAN addresses and cleaning up any that have expired. Now, the next thing you see is a start broadcast. So this happens on the server. When I start hosting a game, I call start broadcast. And the first thing it does is stop. So this is calling into the base class to just stop any existing, uh, any existing stuff that's going on. And then we call initialize again and start as server. So this just resets it all. If you don't call this stop after you've called the start as client, it won't work. So make sure that you call that first. And then this start as server again just tells it to start broadcasting out the data. And it just broadcasts out the match info. Now clean up expired entries. Well, actually let's skip over this for just a moment. I wanna go to on receive broadcast. So this is the method that you override in the network discovery to actually handle these messages. If you don't do this, you'll, you'll see the messages come by, but you're not really doing anything with them. Not super useful. Here, what we do is um, we take that from address and the data, and then we create that new LAN connection info. Again, the constructor was just getting an IP address and a port out of that info. And then I check to see if my dictionary of addresses contains one that matches that. So if I get a message from a, a, or a broadcast that's a second or third broadcast, I don't wanna keep adding to the dictionary. I wanna find the existing one and I want to update the time. That's right here. So if it does exist, or so this is actually checking, if it doesn't exist, we add a new one and we set the timeout to the current time plus the timeout value. And then we call this update match infos. This is actually just sending off an event to the UI to tell it, hey, we have new matches. And then if it does exist, we just update the time on that dictionary entry to the new timeout. So that way if I get a message and then three seconds later I get another message, we'll have, you know, at the eight second mark is when we'll do the timeout. 
But ideally, I'll keep getting the messages until the game is no longer available. And again, this update match info is this actually just calls into another class where I combine the ma online matchmaking data and the land matchmaking data so that they can both show up in that same nice one list and we don't have to have two separate lists for these things. Now the last thing I want to show in here was the cleanup expired entries. And this is just a loop that just waits for whatever the timeout is and then does a check um, in the loop and we go through each one of the keys. We check to see if the time is uh, less than the current time, which would mean that we've passed the expire time and then we remove it and we mark changed as true. And then if changed was true. So if we actually removed anything, we call update match infos. And the reason for that is I don't want to be sending off events to the, uh, to the UI and the other managers if nothing's actually changed. So we only send that if the data changes. And again, with the timeout here, it's not 100% perfect because on the wait here, we're waiting for the timeout period too. So theoretically, we could get up to like 9.99 seconds in between, but it's good enough for this kind of use. So that's pretty much everything there is to it. It's really nice, really easy to use system. If you're interested in learning more about this stuff or just want to know more UNET stuff, just drop a comment below and let me know. I'm not sure how, how much people care about you know, setting up land games or matchmaking or player lobbies or any of that stuff. But if it's something that you find interesting, definitely leave a comment below so I know I can do some more of these. And uh, if you like the videos, of course, don't forget to subscribe, share them, and um, that's it. Thanks for watching.